Hey guys, welcome back to the next part of this chapter. Today we're going to continue with the skinning, so let's get to it. In the last video, we finished the proper orientation and positioning of the joints for this crane. And as you can see, we have some bones that are going in some very crazy ways, but that's completely fine. One of the rules that uh, one of my teachers taught me about rigging is some people freak out when bones are like poking out of the characters, but you need to remember that you're never going to see the bones. The bones are invisible in the render in the game. As long as the movement and the rotations that you're looking for are working in the way you're uh, expecting them to work, then you're going to be completely fine. So the next step is skinning. Skinning is the process that we're going to use to connect all of these joints that we just created to the geometry that we have here. As you can see, this geometry is a single geometry. That's important because every time you create a skin cluster, if you have several pieces of geometry, you're going to get several skin clusters. And even though that's not a bad thing, it definitely is a performance thing. So usually, usually you want everything to be a single geometry to avoid having several skin cross clusters and be able to control everything with just one uh, skinning method. So what I'm going to do here, and this is very important, I'm going to select all of the joints individually. Do not make the mistake of just selecting the last or the first joint and thinking that you're good here. You're going to select all of the joints that you're going to be skinning to, and then you're going to select the geometry. You're going to go into skin, bind skin, and then you're going to use the following options. Let me reset the settings. You're going to change this from joint hierarchy to selected joints, so that only the joints that you have selected, which in this case, of course, it's all of them, are going to be... Um, uh, you're going to get that the skinning. Uh, right now, we're going to use closest distance, uh, classic linear, keep everything together. The only thing I'm going to change is this max influence. I usually keep it at four. For this thing, which is a mechanical object, it really doesn't matter because we're going to be pretty much having like full or complete uh, sections of the rigging uh, ready. But for characters, four is usually a little bit better. And I'm just going to hit apply. Now, what's going to happen, as you can see here, is that the joints are going to change color. And depending on the color, you can see how far in the hierarchy they are. So, for instance, these guys that are this, like, deep pink are the last bones of the hierarchy. And as we go through the hue, we're going to go all the way to, like, this orange, which is the root joint. If we select the root joint and we move it, everything's going to move, of course. But if we select the next one and we try to move it or rotate it, you're going to see that things are going to start twisting in very weird ways. So it looks like, a, like there's a lot of influences that are not where we want them to be. And this is where the, the next tool uh, comes into play, which is the Paint Skin Weight tool. So I'm going to select the object. I'm going to go into Skin, and we're going to go into this Paint Skin Weight tool. I'm going to double click it or over here to make sure that we open the tool settings. And this is the thing that we're going to be using quite a bit throughout the course which is the way in which we're going to be correcting and painting the weights in, in, in the way that we want them to work. So if we go to the air, our robot joint or to the root joint, you're going to see that this character right here, I actually have this thing called use color ramp uh, turn on so that we can see the, the gradient better. This root joint right here has a lot of influence on a lot of different parts. So if we move this root joint, we're going to be moving, of course, everything because of the hierarchy. But if we were to isolate this joint, one interesting thing that will happen is it will move vertices all the way up here. So the, the uh, hotter the color, the more influence it has. And what I need to do is I need to start painting things in such a way that they only move the things that I want them to move. I usually like to start from the, um, from the tip all the way to the back. Some people like to do it other way around. It's, it's perfectly fine. So let's go, for instance, to this air, uh, to the robot finger A, which is this first one. And you can immediately see that this uh, bone right here has a lot of influence in areas that I don't want there to be influence. So it's, it's bending the other fingers, and it's, it's doing some very weird things right there. So let's fix it. The way we're going to fix it is it's very, very simple. We're going to go into the options here, and the first thing I'm going to go is into the select option. I'm going to select this option, and I'm going to double-click these edges right here to select the whole island of uh, vertices, or the, the whole face island right here. And then I'm going to go into the paint mode, and I'm going to select a value of 1 on replace, and I'm going to flood it. So what that is doing, it's telling, hey, all of you vertices, all of you little guys, you're all going to follow this bone completely. A vertice can only follow an object up to a value of 1. So if we're flooding this thing with a value of 1, we're telling this vertice you will only follow that guy and that guy only. So if there was any other weight that these vertices were following somewhere else with another bone, they deleted that, um, that um, amount of uh, influence, and now they're completely following this bone right here. I'm going to do the same with the finger B. So I'm going to go finger B. I'm going to say select. I'm going to select all of these guys. I'm going to go paint. I'm going to say opacity 1, value 1, replace, flood. 
So now all of these vertices are only going to be following the B joint right there. We're going to do the same thing for the for the C joint. And you can actually see that the color is getting a little bit more intense here because all of the joint that was lost on other parts of the of the element is now coming back to the parts that it, it should be going. So select, double click on this guys, paint, and I'm going to say flood. And there we go. So now if we take a look at this guys, if we select the bones and we rotate, the little metal thing rotates very nicely. You can see that there's it's it's not deforming anymore, but there's still some deformation on the on the head of the thing, right? On this uh, other part. Now that's going to be solved very easily because now if we go to the head thing and we go into select, we can say, hey, this head and this object right here and this object right here, like all of those three objects, I want you to please flood them and only obey this joint right here. So now if I move this, we get this nice rotation that we're looking for. And if we select this and we move it, now it's only moving the little metal part. Why? Because all the weight that was assigned to the, to the head here is now assigned to the proper bone that we have here. So that's why I don't worry too much about like flooding everything to zero and then back to one. I just flood to one on this particular object because as, as I go down the, the, line, the lane here, everything's just going to keep following. So for instance here, what do I want to uh, move with this? Just these two things, just this like metal thing and this plastic thing. So I'm going to, again, select the geometry, double click on my, uh, my tool here, go to the arm C joint, go into select, and I'm going to select this like coin thing, this thing, go back to paint and flood. Because that's it. Because all of these things right here are going to be uh, controlled by the arm B joint. So I'm going to go to the arm B joint, I'm going to select, and I'm going to start selecting. I'm going to start all the way here. So let's go this little guy, this whole thing, this other little guy. And then up here, like this metal chunk, this whole thing right here. Here's where modeling, like proper modeling techniques are going to be a lifesaver because if you model everything in the proper way, then all of this is going to be really fast. I'm just going to go paint and I'm going to say flood. So now as you can see, all of this section is being controlled by this joint. Let's select the joint and you can see that it's moving this. Again, I'm not worried about this deformation here because as soon as I uh, correct the deformation for this bone, all of those weights are going to be lost and everything is going to be working properly. Same thing here, like I can check this out and look at how nice that looks or that moves. So like the geometry again, double click here, go into the next arm, which is this one, go into select. And we're going to start with this like big metal chunk. This one right here. This little bolt this thing right here and I think that's it there is a couple of geometry mistakes here I don't remember when I mulled this thing but I could definitely do it better now <laughs> so I'm just gonna go paint and flood and there we go so now this whole arm is gonna be modified by this bone right there so when we move the bone everything moves again not worried about this deformation there it looks very wacky very cartoonish because as soon as we start painting the next part which is all of this area everything is gonna be clean some people like, again, to work from, from the bottom up. I, I don't know why I like doing it the other way around, but um, it has worked well for me. So here on the base, this is the second base, so it's uh, from this guy. So I'm just going to double click here, 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 this whole like plastic chunk, and this, paint, and float to one. So all of that section is now going to be moved by this bone right here. We go to base A right here and this base, base A it's going to be this circular sh uh, circular uh, like thing right here here and here I was about to say a bad word there <laughs> I'm usually very when I teach my classes I just say a lot of things but I need to keep it family friendly here sorry for that guys <laughs> now we're going to go to the root joint and the root joint is going to move this remaining thing so I'm just going to grab this thing here double click uh, and I think that's it. I think I don't think there's any extra geometry. So I'm just going to go back to paint and flood. Now we do a test. So if we move the uh, root joint, of course, everything's going to move. If we move, move uh, if we move this guy, very nice. Only this thing is going to rotate. Great. And then if we grab this guy and we move it, the top part is going to rotate. Very cool. If we grab this joint right here, the arm is going to rotate. Very nice. If we grab this thing, the arm is going to rotate very nice as well. If we grab this thing, nice. We grab this thing, 
And we get this effect, very cool, which again, it's only gonna move this inner part, not this upper part, so it's perfect. And then here's the, here's the, the real test for you guys. If you grab these three bones and you rotate them in X at the same time, you should get this effect. If you're not getting this, then you probably mess something up on the on the local rotation axis, and that's what's uh, that's what's making this whole thing. Uh, uh, what that that might be what's breaking the whole thing. And uh, yeah, so so that's it, guys. That's it. Our our as you can see, our bind uh, is working. It's working nicely. Everything is is working the way we intended to work. And uh, now we're ready to jump onto the uh, next part, which is the controllers. We're gonna be creating controllers because it's very, very time consuming to go into each of these bones and try to move the bone uh, by itself. So, so now we're gonna be going into the, um, what's the word, into the, into the controller part where we're gonna be creating controllers, making sure they're really, really clean and uh, constraining them. We're gonna be connecting them with constraints to make sure that everything moves and animates the way we expect it to. So that's it for this one, guys. Make sure to clean up your skinning. Make sure that it's looking very nice. Of course, the local rotation axis and the joints from the past video need to be perfect for this to work. And uh, I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.